It's National Embroidery Month and I highly recommend, if you haven't tried it before, to pick up a needle and thread and to teach yourself embroidery. Just the act of sewing is so meditative and it's so present that even if you make something that just ends up in the bottom of the shoebox, the time that you spent making it is going to be valuable. The title crafter gives you just infinite freedom to make. Whether it's knitting, crochet, decoupage, the work can just be the process of making. And I think it's in that process as a crafter or as a creative that we really learn the most and we can be the most self-reflective. I remember my very, very first embroidery piece. It was a little rabbit that was gently embroidered onto a scrap piece of felt, and I thought I had invented embroidery. I was calling it thread sketching. Very embarrassing when I found out that I didn't make it up. I have this portrait that I did, which was of uh, Petit Noir. It was from a photograph we took that was in Rolling Stone magazine. My technique is completely different now. It was really cool to see as well, because not only have I changed, but also looking back and seeing the value in that kind of technique and going like, actually, I can use these textures again and it's how I used to sew. And this piece is so embarrassing, but also so special. It was my first portrait ever, and it's of my little sister. So yeah, these are the pieces from my past that I keep to remind me about all the things that kind of keep you humble and excited for the future. I think the best piece of advice that I could have gotten when I started was to be better at not using my phone. I feel like in the past three years, I've lost so many hours to scrolling and there's a certain superpower that you have when you have a strong attention span and you're able to focus and just be inside your life. That's the skill that needs to be nurtured and something that I'm making a conscious effort to nurture now. But I really wish I'd been told this three, four, 10 years ago. Anything that you do outside of your main focus is going to inadvertently inform what you do. And I always find that inspiration is kind of like this flash. It's this like moment of energy that comes when you see a new material, you see a color, you watch a movie, and you just become like inundated with this energetic excitement to create. But I always find that that's almost sporadic and it's something that can't be controlled. What really, really is such an important quality to nurture is motivation. One question I wish I was asked more is what is your relationship with social media and Instagram? I think that there is such a facade that gets put across with your numbers and your likes and your followers and what you choose to post and what you don't choose to post. Social media has become the foundation of our business models as creatives and it's a relationship. A relationship with social media is something that needs to be nurtured but also needs strong boundaries. In my opinion, the future of embroidery is a lot more embraced in the art world. Embroidery goes through ebbs and flows, and it always has throughout history. It's been around since the beginning of time. It was one of the most highly paid professions in the 18th century. Then it was a cottage craft, and now it's just getting this massive resurgence. I think that the future of it is kind of infinite. The only way I feel like the pandemic changed my relationship with my craft is it gave me a deep gratitude for it. I felt like my work was my company, it was my home. I happened to be surrounded by these materials that I loved and it was the one place that I could feel that I had some form of control. To so anybody who's struggling to get back to arts and creative projects, I just recommend starting small. Find a little notebook that you really like, maybe buy one so that it's special, like a beautiful hardcover, and just draw something, just something small, and put it away. We put so much pressure on ourselves to be productive and then to share, and be productive and to share, and always looking for validation. So everything we create, we have this expectation that we need to put out into the world. And I think, if we get back to the essence of why we create and just make something for yourself, that really can help reignite that little bit of fire that you had before and hopefully, you know, that fire grows. 
Portraiture is incredibly intimidating because you want to capture emotion, but you also want to capture likeness. There are moments in portraiture embroidery where there is such particular details that need to be captured, specifically with the eyes and the mouth, because a highlight in the wrong place is a completely different expression, a shadow in the wrong place is a frown. So I think that there is slightly intimidating moments when it comes to portraiture embroidery, but once you've got certain skills and understanding around these elements, you will kind of get over those hurdles and and definitely find portraiture less intimidating. Knowing how to finish a work is really important. For you to assign value onto something that has taken you hours, days, months, you have to be framing it properly and framing it in a way that's gonna last forever so that it can be displayed properly and loved for a long time. Thank you for watching. In my new class, we'll learn abstract embroidery, collage, new materials, seamless patches, and how to make sure that you frame and display your work archivally. Click the link below so we can get started.